This is your Bible Geeks Daily Download, Cross Training, Bionic Vision. My dad recently had surgery to fix his cloudy, unfocused vision. After a handful of futuristic procedures involving lasers and carefully calibrated lenses, he's now able to see without glasses for the first time in his life. But it took him a while to acclimate to his new eyes in the days after his surgery, as everything was too bright and tinted in psychedelic rainbow hues. And now that he's healed, his bionic vision is probably better than mine. We're cross-training to develop our servanthood, one of 12 marks of the master we're working on this year. Servanthood includes seeing with new eyes, humility, sacrificial love, and honor. So how does Jesus give us new eyes to see? Here's what you need to know. As he prepared for his last days, Jesus began speaking more plainly to his disciples. He asked them, do you not yet perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Having eyes, do you not see? Mark 8 verses 17 through 18. In between two stories about healing blind men, Christ challenges the disciples to shed their spiritual blindness. Three times on that final journey to Jerusalem, he tells them of his upcoming death but they're unable to fully understand the victory of the cross. Each time, Jesus goes a step further, pointing to the sacrificial service demanded of his disciples. He redefines greatness in the kingdom, saying, whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mark 10, 42 to 45. Jesus wants us to receive glory and good things, but we have to reverse our thinking on how to get there. We're exalted after we humble ourselves. To preserve our well-being, we sacrifice and pursue others' well-being. No area of life remains unchanged when we follow the cross-shaped path to blessing. When we see as Jesus sees, we view interactions with compassion, purpose, and spiritual awareness. So here's what you need to do. Pray for new eyes to see how to relate to people. Do you follow the way of the world, looking out for number one and protecting yourself rather than the way of Jesus? While Dr. Phil and other relationship gurus might have some good advice, Jesus' way has to be our starting point, and it will always seem a little strange to most people. How can we have empowered love when we yield our rights? walking a second mile or turning the other cheek. Where our old eyes might see a victimized doormat, our new eyes see a way to overcome evil with good. Romans 12, 21. It requires daily reorientation, seeing each encounter with a fresh perspective. Memorize a key verse that helps you refocus your life. Like, love does not insist on its own way. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 5. Or, in humility, count others more significant than yourself. Philippians 2, 3. Repeat it to yourself when you get stuck and feel yourself fighting for your own. Read one of the Gospels and each day imagine how the Jesus you meet in Scripture would navigate your situations and choices. Yield to the influence of what Jesus would do. As you strive to say with Paul, it is no longer I that live, but Christ who lives in me. Galatians 2:20. But transformation doesn't happen when we read one Bible verse. It takes constant practice. Every day I have to catch myself in the act of seeing with old eyes, fighting for what's mine, and acting selfishly. But when I see it, then I can repair it. Now I can stop myself and course correct mid-interaction. And as God's Spirit continues growing fruit in my life, I see the Jesus way to respond more and more and my relationships and my influence are blessed as I follow him. So how can we see with new eyes through the week? Here's five challenges that you can do on your own along with us. First, we invite you to read Mark 10, 35 to 52, Luke 6, 20 to 42, Luke 24, 13 to 35, John 12, 35 to 43, and 2 Corinthians 4, 3 to 18. And then we'll reflect together on a spiritual question, asking ourselves, how could Jesus' perspective change how I view my current challenges? And then we'll make our request to God, praying, Lord, open my eyes, Psalm 119, 18. 
And then we challenge you to respond by taking action this week and thinking of a time you interacted with someone from a less than Christ-like point of view, and then reach out to apologize. Finally, we encourage you to reach out by asking someone, how has God changed your perspective of sacrifice, service, and prioritizing others? So let's view service like Jesus does this week. And may the Lord bless you and keep you today. Shalom. Shalom.